Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we'll be discussing how Neville Longbottom retrieves the Sword of Gryffindor from the Sorting Hat during the Battle of Hogwarts in the Deathly Hallows. The Sword of Gryffindor was, of course, once the property of one of the four founding members of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, Godric Gryffindor. Made for him by one of the finest goblin silversmiths to have ever lived, as well as a king during his lifetime, Ragnarok I, it was a stunning weapon that held magical properties in addition to the egg-sized rubies that adorned its hilt. Similar to other items associated with the founding members, including the magical diadem of Rowena Ravenclaw, which enhances the intelligence of the wearer, and Godric Gryffindor's hat, which became the sentient, singing sorting hat responsible for placing students in their houses, the Sword of Gryffindor also had magical elements of its own. To start with, due to the fact that it was made of goblin forged steel, it had the ability to absorb the powers of other materials that it came into contact with. This explains why the Sword of Gryffindor was able to destroy Horcruxes. It had touched Basilisk Venom, and Basilisk Venom can destroy Horcruxes. Even more impressive still was the sword's ability to come to the aid of a true Gryffindor in need. The legend goes that if any Gryffindor who was pure of heart found themselves in a challenging situation, they would be able to call upon the sword, knowingly or not, to appear in Gryffindor's former hat, aka the Sorting Hat, to aid them during their time of need. And so, during the Battle of Hogwarts, we see a ravaged version of Neville Longbottom ragged from the year-long internal war that he's led against the Death Eater professors who would overrun the halls of Hogwarts during his seventh and final year at the school. And as he leverages his knowledge of herbology to fight Voldemort's army of Death Eaters with a bunch of mandrakes, he's also given a main directive from Harry, kill the snake. But before he even gets near Nagini, Neville finds himself completely unarmed, face to face with Voldemort himself. At this point, once again greatly miscalculating the powers of ancient magic, Voldemort decides to shove the Sorting Hat on top of Neville's head for his defiance against the Dark Lord. What he doesn't realize is that he's just given Neville one of the few things that could provide him with a weapon, and in the next few moments we witness Neville retrieve the Sword of Gryffindor from the hat, which also happens to be one of the only things that could take down Nagini. So where did Neville get the sword from? Well, he was quite obviously a very courageous Gryffindor in dire need of something to protect himself with. So, the sword appears for him in the Sorting Hat, which he uses to immediately kill Nagini. With a single stroke, Neville sliced off the Great Snake's head, which spun high into the air, gleaming in the light flooding from the entrance hall, and Voldemort's mouth was open in a scream of fury that nobody could hear. And with that, we've come to the end of today's video. What did you think? Do you agree that Neville Longbottom had the true heart of a lion? Please share your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.